black phantoms will follow soul remains. Here are the two NPC phantoms on the second world of the Stonefang Tunnel Arkstone, and here is me defeating them without taking any damage at all. Take the example of the very difficult black phantom found on the second level of the Stonefang Arkstone when the world is at pure black tendency. The soul remains will distract this guy for around 6 to 10 seconds. Plus, watch here, you can see him run out of mana for his spells. After this point, all he can do is wave his tiny sword around. See, if you can distract him for long enough with soul remains, then his mana will run out and you can take him down far easier. Remember this annoying jerk? This is all it takes. I mean, it's a game changer when you start to understand its power. Check this out. All three, distracted, while I just stand there. Soul remains are dropped by skeletons in the first world of the Shrine of Storm Arkstone and are sold by Grave Robber Blige after you release him from his prison cell in the same area. Then, after Fatty Birdhead, he lives just down here, a short distance away from the bonfire. How to zoom in when you aim your bow. You can lock on and aim with your bow by pressing the R3 button, aka pushing in the right analog button. On PlayStation, you can precision aim by pressing L1 or L2. While precision aiming, you can push up and down on the D-pad to zoom in and out. This makes it far easier to see exactly where your arrow is going to land. Also, remember that arrows do have a gravity drop. This means that the further away the target is, the higher you have to aim. Also, when an arrow hits near an enemy, they can hear it, which means that you can use arrows as a distraction if you wish. An easy explanation of world tendency. This video does contain advanced tips, but there are a few beginner points that I must cover before I continue. Firstly, don't worry about the complicated world tendency system. All you have to do is stay in soul form as you play through the game. Soul form is where you are a half alive, half ghost thing with only half a health bar. As you play through the game, stay in soul form and as you progress, the world tendency will turn white. Eventually it will turn pure white which unlocks everything in the white world. This means you can go back through the various worlds and get or experience the various white world items or events. Also, when you kill a boss, you become fully human again. After this, you must go back to the Nexus as soon as you can, making sure you don't die and then have your character jump from a high elevation so that you die and return to soul form while still in the Nexus. Don't forget to run back up and collect your souls. Also, don't worry too much about character tendency. I will explain it a little more in the quickfire tips at the end of the video, but the short version is, don't kill harmless NPCs and don't go invading other players until you are ready to turn your character tendency from pure white to pure black. Getting started for real. You do the journey to the Nexus bit, you do the first boss bit and so forth, and you end up at the Nexus. And it's here where only the first world is open. This section right here is where most people will quit the game, even those who love From Software games. And here's why. Getting through the first part as a new player and actually making any bankable progress is very difficult. I'm going to show you here where to go and how to get started. I've killed off all the enemies, but I'm going to talk you through the route, because once you open your first door, then you're pretty much on your way to becoming a pro. Just there is a sword which is knocked open by a boulder. Up here is where the boulder comes from. To the left here, this is where you go after you complete the run I'm showing you. Vault over this wall to get to the crossbow. Through here. Go through there and cut the chains. Take it slow down here, the enemies are pretty tough. Open the door with the lever. Then you get to the cling ring, which is a very powerful ring. Back down here, this is where we started from. This shortcut is now open, even if you die. So put on the cling ring, and as you can see there, my soul form health bar has gone up quite a bit. Pause using photo mode. Go to settings, and then to controller, and to controls, and take a look at how to activate photo mode. For me, it's left on the touchpad. During gameplay, if you are also watching TV and you want to take your eyes off the screen for just a moment, perhaps so that you can skip the intro to your show, then use photo mode and it pauses all the enemies. The only thing it doesn't pause are human invaders, who will still be able to see you and subsequently defeat you. The Treacherous Staircase Clear the enemies from the area first, then run over here and lure the Red Knight out. 
He's a very slow mover, so there'll be a lot of waiting around. However, once you get over here, just here, the knight runs, falls, and you get 2,000 souls. Though, do keep in mind that if this is very early in the game, that you really shouldn't be farming souls yet until you are able to level up. If the big guy falls from here but doesn't die, just run up to the top, stand about here, and then let him plummet to his doom from here. This also works on the blue knight. Rewarp to find lost crystal lizards. There is a lizard over there, and I'm going to let it escape. After it's gone, there are two things you can do. You can run or warp back to the bonfire, and then re-warp back into the area. The crystal lizard has now reappeared. Or, if it's convenient, you can kill your character, respawn at the bonfire, and then run over, and the crystal lizard is still there. After you defeat a boss, the crystal lizard will reappear with new stuff. It is yet another reward that the game offers you for returning to places that you've already visited. Crystal Lizards respawn after defeating bosses. I have completed all three bosses in this first world Arkstone, and I took down the Red Dragon, and I did it all while in Soul Form. I never died in this world while in Human Form, only in Soul Form. As a result, the world is now White Tendency, as you can see by the big glowing white ball just there. Besides the dragon being gone, which I can demonstrate later in my quickfire tips, this gate down here is now open, and luckily, to help me make my point, there is a crystal lizard in this area. Now since the world has only just turned white, there's no way I could have ever had access to this crystal lizard. This means, since I've killed three end stage bosses in this world, this crystal lizard should respawn three times. In addition, if the crystal lizard falls off the cliff, then you lose its upgrade materials, so don't let that happen. I have a tip coming later in this video about backing up a save game, which some people consider to be an exploit. However, I sort of do not, and this video is part of the reason why. For some reason, when I play as my character Tanya Nipples, my spellcaster, sometimes crystal lizards just don't spawn. And, as I was first making this video, it didn't spawn and there was literally nothing I could do. I had missed out on all of these materials. By this example alone, I can see some merit in backing up saves, and I do hope that if this game is ever available on other platforms, that you can make backup saves on those too. This is the fourth time I've spawned in, and finally the crystal lizard has stopped appearing. Now for the tricky part. There is an aggressive NPC up there. She's aggressive, so killing her won't affect my character tendency. However, it will affect world tendency, sending it back to neutral. However, as you see here, she falls all the way down there and dies. This is the number one reason why you should not fight her in here. If she falls down there into the water, there's no way of getting her stuff. She also won't affect world tendency if she dies due to an environmental reason. I mean, beware of this point. Don't kill NPCs or phantoms with drops or anything that could be considered an environmental death, as sometimes you won't get the world tendency changes out of it, and in many cases, you won't get the more valuable character tendency changes out of it. The character tendency rewards, should I say. So, as I understand it, the same is true if you use Poison Cloud or Soul Sucker. I take the ladder down, holding the dodge button to move slightly faster, and luckily for me, she died here. However, if she had fallen into the water, her stuff would have been lost, so just don't risk it. This is another one of those cases where, if you're doing backup saves, reload and kill her in the regular way, otherwise the game gets more difficult, though albeit not game-breakingly so. Getting the Regenerator Ring early with the Regenerator Ring Skip The Regenerator Ring Jump is far easier if you take off all of your armour. It's in World 1 of the Shrine of Storms over here. Starting from the bonfire, run on up here. I have already taken down the enemies just to clear the way. Left here where the fog gate was. Hold up your shield for the trap, up here and around, then just over there, that's where those two annoying archers were. Then usually you will see a message around here or something or other. Either way, take off all of your stuff so that you are as light as possible, and you're aiming to run and roll right here. Here it is again. Then you have four options. You can kill your character by running off there. You can use your Nexial Binding if you don't mind losing the souls. You can use an Arcstone Shard if you want to keep your souls. Or you can do what I did, which is to save up for the Evacuation skill, and then warp back to the Nexus. I will explain how to get to that in the next tip. 
get the evacuation spell early. This is a faith spell that allows you to walk back to the bonfire, and it comes in quite a bit handy when you're farming or trying to grab crystal lizards. It's an all-round good tool to have. There are two other ways you can warp back to the bonfire. The first is to use the Nexial Binding item, which you receive near the start of the game, but you lose all of your souls when you transport. Or you can use an Arcstone Shard, which you consume and it allows you to keep all of your souls. But they are not a common item and they cost 5000 souls if you buy them from Patches when he turns up at the Nexus. After finishing the first part of the first world and opening up the Arcstone seals, you can pop over to this world. I have killed all of the enemies just to show you, but you go over here and you get the talisman. Starting here, you go over to the left and you talk to this guy here. You need to have at least 10 points invested in faith in order for this guy to talk to you, but it's totally worth the investment. Buy the spell for 20,000 souls and attune it, and now you can evacuate. Also, about this guy, talk to him repeatedly over a short space of time, and he may leave the next time you arrive. Also, he disappears after you rescue Saint Urbane, but that's quite a while into the game. You rescue Saint Urbane, at the area where Patches tells you that there's treasure down the hole. Either way, buy the evacuation spell and any of the others before he leaves, especially if you're going for the Faith Spells trophy. Two-handing weapons for added strength and damage. See here with this enemy, I hit it one handed for 86 damage. When I two hand the weapon, I hit it for 123 damage. When you two hand a weapon, you gain 1.5 times strength. So, for example, if you have 10 strength, but your weapon requires 15, if you two hand the weapon, then you can use it to its full effectiveness. Different weapons affect enemy weaknesses. Hold up your shield and make your way around the back of the skeleton. Then, using a blunt weapon, whack it or try to get a backstab. Either way, it trivialises what are otherwise considered to be very tricky early enemies, and this is because skeletons are very weak to blunt weapons. In this example, I'm going to buy a pickaxe from the vendor here, even though I don't have the strength stat for it. I don't have the strength to use this weapon, but you can see there, when I two-hand the weapon, I can now use it to its full effectiveness. Here, you are watching a scale miner being attacked with a plus one level axe, which does very little damage. Now, switch to the pickaxe, which is a piercing weapon, and even though it's technically weaker than the axe, it does far more damage to the scale miners. Early places to find hard stones. Early upgrade materials can be found here at the smithing ground. This guy here sells some of the basic upgrade materials, which means you can grind up some souls and buy as many as you wish. Head on over to the Lord's Path, and just down here you will find a place to farm hardstone shards, and most likely get your first large hardstone. Just remember to wear your providential ring for added item discovery. For further large hardstones, head over to the smithing grounds, where there are plenty of places where you will find one-off drops of large hardstones. I really struggled with my early faith build, so getting my mace up to level 4 was a big help to start with, especially with the skeletons. Making easy work of the Tower Knight. Quite a few people have made it clear online that they struggled with the Tower Knight, so I'm going to show you how to take down this oversized tin can on your first go. You need the Feath Ring, which is found in the first world of the first Arkstone. You also need the Cling Ring for added health, which is also found in the first world. You will need health items and things to apply to your weapon, such as Pine Resin, Sticky White Slime, or maybe a magic spell to enhance your weapon if you have it. You will need to two-hand your weapon for added power. I will say that if you are the sort of person who uses the uploading backup save exploit, then around here is where you would do it. Head on through and roll, because that first swipe is supposed to one-shot kill you. Run all the way down here, avoiding his projectile. Though, don't worry too much about those, he, he doesn't really do them that often. There is a trophy for not killing the archers. If you hang around this area and you have the thief ring on, then the archers cannot see you. I'm using a magic weapon, so I can't apply pine resin or white slime, but if you can, then do it now while the knight approaches. You need to attack the legs until they are spewing magic vapour. This is very much a hit and run tactic. Get in, apply some damage, and then run away before the knight retaliates. There, now both feet are fully expelling magic. So just a few more hits and the knight will fall. 
You can see there, I actually got quite unlucky. Firstly, I was knocked down, costing me valuable seconds. Then, this big pole thing starts blocking my way, wasting even more time. I just managed to get in between the pole and hit the knight's head. If I had gotten there faster, this would have been the end. But it gets up, so I need to bash it a few more times before it dies. Now, this is one of the few occasions where you can run around this area, rather than rushing straight back to the Nexus. There are no enemies in this area, other players cannot invade, and there are pieces of dropped loot that you will miss if you warp away now. Also, this is a main stage boss, which usually unlocks the next area, but in this case doesn't. Either way, it means that any of the crystal lizards that you found prior to reaching this boss have now respawned. Warp back to the Nexus. Run up somewhere high, kill your character, and get yourself back into soul form. And obviously, don't forget to collect your souls when you respawn at the Nexus. Just to show off, here's me defeating the boss in 45 seconds. Taking out the Red Dragon. First, we need some bows, so from here, let's go to Island Edge. Let's start from the beginning. I have killed off the enemies so I can take a direct route. Just over there, that item is the first bow that we're after. Be careful in here, there are some dangerous enemies. All the way up for the compound longbow. Back down, now you can go through this secret door right here, but I don't recommend it. I prefer the other entrance, so back up here and around, all the way down to the invisible wall second entrance. Be careful of the trap firing from behind. Tricky enemies in here, but you get to the prison cell where you open the door with the copper key, which you will have probably found by now. It's not very far away. I buy the short bow and the long bow. I also buy 250 arrows, as you don't want to run out when you are fighting the dragon. You can also buy arrows at the Nexus. Also, if you are really stuck, the copper key is over this way. From here, go over here, mind the trap, and it's on this corpse here. Anyway, over to the Lord's Path. The second tower over here, you are going to find the compound shot bow. We now have four bows to play with, and the reason I showed you four bows is because we all have different stats, but within this group, there should be at least one that you can use. You can see the strength there at 12, 18, 15, and 22. So you need to pick the most powerful one that you can use. You can see there that I cannot use two of the bows, but I can use the 12 and the 15. Now this may seem odd, since I clearly only have 10 strength, but as mentioned earlier, when you two-hand weapons, you increase your strength by 1.5 and 1.5 times 10 is 15. I should mention that you two hand bows by default. Now, killing this dragon takes a stupidly long, boring time, so I strongly suggest that you upgrade your bow as much as you possibly can. I even suggest you do a little bit of grinding in order to upgrade your bow, because the more you can do to increase its damage output, the less time it will take you to kill this dragon. You go to the first tower, and as it happens, there's a tip from another player saying try magic, which I do, getting a lucky fireball for 25 damage, and a soul arrow for 24. But that's not nearly enough, perhaps if I were later in the game and more powerful, but no, that's not enough damage. So, I equip my bow, that I've leveled up with materials I've been grinding away at, and as you can see, getting a shot is very difficult especially since I'm not pulling my bow back soon enough, ergo making it more difficult for myself. I soon tire of this and go for an easier spot. Now, it's all about timing and aiming, and it takes me a long time to get my aim correct. So, we speed this up, and at this point it's been 4 minutes. I have my aiming spot, and as you can see, I pull my bow back, I wait for it to cross my path, and then I release. I have sped this up massively because it takes over 15 minutes of pullback release, pullback release, before I finally kill the beast. I don't use even close to 200 arrows, 
but it's seriously better to have too many rather than too little. You don't want to have nearly killed the dragon only to run out of arrows, so you have to respawn and do it all again from the start. Also, once the dragon is dead, this area gets a lot easier. You can work your way across the top of the bridges all the way to the other side and then work your way backwards underground. This allows you to take those projectile enemies and the dogs from behind. Do feel free to try out some other arrows if you've picked them up or bought them, but they all had pretty much the same effect for me in that they all had low damage numbers. Finally, with no pomp or ceremony, I get 7630 souls and the small scaled flame dragon soul. Also, since I killed it in soul form rather than in human form, it counts towards my white tendency in this world. Defeating the armor spider and avoiding the most common mistake. You can complete the Arkstone seals in whatever order you wish, but I would recommend that you take my previous advice on taking down the red dragon before you fight the armored spider boss. As a side note, you can consume the soul of the dragon as it isn't used in any sort of weapon or spell. Before you start the smithing grounds, take your bow and plenty of arrows, or if you are playing as a magical character, then take plenty of aged spice or stock up on fresh spice from the Nexus blacksmith. Most people fail on their first attempt, so I'm going to quickly show you how to get back to the boss. I'm working on the assumption here that you have already opened up everything and you've collected everything. Ergo, I'm just running past the enemies. Game on! Yeah, game on! Move over to this area here. If you took my advice about the red dragon, your bow should be upgraded at least a little, and as you can see, the boss is unable to do any sort of damage to my character. If you are playing as a magic build, then you can reach from here using the soul arrow. Collect up these things, collect the soul, and then warp back to the nexus and kill your character to remove human form. As a side note, the most common mistake in this game is to go running after that crystal lizard over there while still in human form. This lizard is a trap. Also, many people try to invade you in this area because they know that new players will go chasing the lizard in fully human form and get themselves slaughtered, making it very difficult to get to pure white tendency. You should return to this area in soul form and then try for the lizard. This is a trap. This lizard will run you into a group of enemies. However, if you shoot it with an arrow, it falls onto its back, which allows you to run up and get at it before it runs away. The backup save method. I do hope that Demon's Souls ends up on other platforms, but at the time of making this video, it's only on PlayStation 5. That means that if you want to make a backup save, you need to pay for a PlayStation Plus subscription. The first thing you need to do is go over to settings and then down to saved data, then down to synced saved data, then over to Enable Autosync, and you need to turn this off. The word Disabled should appear up there on the right. Now, let's say that you were running around minding your own business and your character died while holding thousands of souls. Rather than risk not getting back to them, you decide to back up your save. Close the game and go into the game's options on the interface, go down to Upload Download Saved Data. Then to upload, click yes if you saved before you left the game, i.e. you chose to save and exit. Then go back and hunt down your souls. If your character dies before getting them back, then follow the same procedure as with uploading, except that when you get to this page, choose to download rather than upload. Making a backup save just before a boss battle is a little bit naughty, but many people, myself included, don't have enough spare time to go running around between bonfires after each failure. Morion Blade and the Clever Rat's Ring In the Prison of Hope, the Clever Rat's Ring is on the Ballista Bridge. When your health falls below 30%, it improves the damage output of your spells, melee weapons, arrows and crossbow bolts. For the Morion Blade, you need to have given Blacksmith Ed the Searing Demon Soul so that you've unlocked Weapon Manufacture. You also need the Storm Demon Soul so that a plus 8 weapon can be converted into the Morion Blade. The plus 8 weapon could be a Short Sword, Long Sword, Night Sword, Bastard Sword, Claymore or Great Sword. If you have the Morion Blade equipped and the Clever Rat Ring equipped, you get 140% damage boost. 
And this still adds, even if you don't have the stat requirements to actually use the Morion Blade. Just make sure that the Morion Blade is in your off hand whenever you use magic or a one handed weapon. For example, what you just saw there was the Rat's Ring and the Ring of Magical Sharpness giving me 3145 damage. Now, when I have the Morion Blade in my off hand and I still have the Rat's Ring and the Ring of Sharpness, the boss becomes a one shot kill. Getting back to the boss fight in the Prison of Hope, here is how you get from the bonfire back to the boss in the first world of the Tower of Latria. It is so stupidly easy to get lost in this level, and it's even worse when you're trying to find your way back to where you were. The key to getting this done is to aim to pretty much keep going down. You are trying to get to the ground floor. I have sped this up, but you can slow it down using YouTube speed tools if you really want to follow it exactly. As for the ballista in this area, there are two ways to disable it. You can go around the back and you can turn it off, or you can roll in time to miss the projectiles and then turn it off. If you decide to take it head on, then you get an achievement for rolling between the projectiles and making it. I cover how to do this during a quick fire tip at the end of the video. But do note, it may take you a few attempts to achieve it. In that case, you can use this portion of the video to make your way all the way back to the ballista so that you can try again. Tying things up with the Fool's Idol. The first thing you need to tie up is to go all the way up here and to kill this guy. As you run towards the boss for the first time, there's also a phantom to battle. Just don't forget to throw some soul remains. Wander in, collect these items at your leisure, and then begin your attack. To get the trophy, you shouldn't attack the clones. Press the right analog button to target the enemy, and the one without a health bar is the real one. However, if you've tried this two or three times and you are struggling, you could try using the Clever Rat's Ring. This is the ring that you got off the Ballista Bridge. Get your health down to 30%, pick your fastest weapon with your best stats, and if you're using a melee weapon, you should also take an elixir for added stamina. Remembering to pick up the items first, I then take an elixir because my endurance is tiny and I need the stamina boost. I then start my attack and I keep bashing, destroying the enemy before it even has a chance to retaliate. Sneak and snipe the lizards in the pit. Hopefully you have upgraded your bow. Here I am getting mine up to level 7 before I go to the lizard pit. Since my bow and stats still make for a pretty weak weapon, I also put on my clever rat's ring and I take damage so that my health bar is below 30%. The trick is, the fewer the shots you fire, the easier it is to defeat these enemies before they can scurry away. I'm wearing the thief ring, and I walk up nice and slow, while staying as near to the wall as possible. As a result, the others have not become frightened as I approach. As you can see, this is a very efficient way to harvest the lizards from the lizard pit. Getting the Adjudicator Trophy There is a secret trophy received for killing this boss without knocking it over. You do this with projectiles. Since you have already leveled up your bow, you lock on with the right analog stick, take your shot, roll, roll, take your shot, and so on and so on until the boss is dead. If you are playing as a mage, then this is a little easier. You just have to be swift with your movements and really pick your time to strike. I got lucky here. The boss didn't really have time to adjust to my method of play. Stat soft caps and hard caps. The hard cap for every stat is 99. You cannot level up more than 99 for each player stat. A soft cap is the number after which you get less for your upgrade points, what some would call diminishing returns. Most people agree you should level up your endurance to a maximum of 40. After that point, you get so little in return for leveling that it just isn't worth it. The soft cap for strength and dexterity is 50. Any points invested after that will have fairly small returns. Magic and Faith level up most efficiently to level 30. Faith has another soft cap at 50. Leveling after that point has very deep diminishing returns, which is due to the less offensive nature of Faith-based magic. Magic also has a soft cap at 30, and any investment after 50 gives you only a very small boost in magical power, meaning any further points are probably best invested into another stat. Intelligence has soft caps at 15, 40, and 60. By level 40, you will have all of the magical memory slots that you can earn. Luck doesn't have a soft cap. You get 4 points in luck every time you invest an upgrade point, and that is true all the way up to level 99. Vitality has a soft cap at 30 and at 50. 
You get very little in return after you pass level 50, but some people still do it for the tiny bit of extra health that they can get. Does the luck stat matter? I did repeated tests trying to prove that the luck stat matters, but my overall conclusion was that it really doesn't. What I discovered was that if you have a luck stat of around 50, then you do get more frequent drops of higher level upgrade materials. What shocked me was that the providential ring doesn't help and may in fact hinder this by spawning lesser items on a more frequent basis. In other words, the higher your luck stat, the less useful the providential ring becomes. What I also discovered was that for a regular playthrough, a luck stat below 10 made farming for materials almost not worth the effort. Ergo, my advice is this, get your luck stat to level 10 and leave it there. When you farm for upgrade materials, do it with the providential ring. Do not level up your luck, because the only benefit is that you will find higher level upgrade materials, but it just isn't worth it. You cannot sell all of the extra gear and items that you pick up, so there's no way of turning your added luck into extra souls. You just end up with a storage compartment full of stuff you don't want, need, or use. Don't worry about killing the tutorial boss. If you decide to travel to the Nexus, then you will come up against the tutorial boss. On your first playthrough, don't worry about winning the fight. All you get is a few souls and some stones to make your first weapon upgrade. Here is how you beat the boss, but take my word for it, the effort and skill required to take down this monster is really not worth it on your first playthrough. The trick to beating this boss is clever dodge rolling and a lot of patience. See, I'm trying to stay behind his butt while he swings, but getting that dodge roll timing correct is very important. The jump there? That is the only time when you really need to back off. The area of effect isn't so bad. Again, get behind the vanguard demon and slowly chip away at his health. The fire spell may seem overpowered compared to my sword, but the spell takes a long time to cast, leaving me vulnerable and unable to move. This does take some practice and is again why I don't suggest you try this on the first time you play. All you get is this, 498 souls, which is nothing, and then you move over into this area, and I will just speed it up here, a few health items and a few of the most common upgrade materials that allow you to level up your weapon just once. Nice to have, but not worth the effort of trying and trying and trying again involved in beating this first boss before you are ready. The starting stats debate. Many people say that the royalty build is the best one, and this is because it starts at soul level 1, meaning you can level up more, making your current stats almost like bonus stats. See here how all the other ones start at different levels. But the truth is that the starting build doesn't really matter at all. You can create whatever type of character you wish. The starting build only governs how quickly you can optimize your character into a spellcaster, faith build, and so forth. However, the starting item for your first playthrough, hands down, has to be the providential ring. The other stuff is only there for you to choose when you play a game on New Game Plus. Quickfire tips. This is for absolute beginners, but when you complete the first part of the first arcstone, don't feel as if you have to continue on in that world. The starting section of each world is the easiest section. Some people say, and I agree, that the starting section of the Prison of Hope is a little more difficult, as is the Depraved Chasm at the end there. But if you want a good starting experience, perhaps knock out these starting areas of each of the shrines, and then consider digging deeper into the more difficult areas. Start a new game, and it starts a brand new save file. You can see here on my load screen, I have been trying out different builds with different named characters. I only mention this because if you want to start a new character with new stats, then you are free to do so. Demon Souls has two weight categories, light and heavy. Keep your equip burden below 50% and you will fast roll. 51% are higher and you will fat roll. Don't confuse this with item burden, which is just how many items you can carry. You are invincible during reposts and backstabs. To backstab, you need to get behind the enemy, and then you press R1 on the PlayStation, or maybe even right bumper on the Xbox controller for PC, you know, if you are streaming onto a PC, or, you know, if it's ever released on PC, which I really hope they do. Dark Souls' kick or push is, is very difficult in Demon Souls. 
You have to push up and attack at the same time. Mistime it even slightly and you will just attack. On a related note, as you can see, unlike other From Software games, there's no plunging attack in Demon Souls. While you are throwing yourself off of ledgers and the Nexus, have a try at getting the collectibles that are lane strewn around the nearby ledgers. The worst case scenario is that you fall off and die, which is what you were trying to do anyway, you know, because you probably don't want to play through the levels in human form. Just as a reminder, here on the equipment page, you can see how many souls you need to get before your next upgrade level. Quick transition here, now you can see I have enough souls for my next level. It doesn't really matter when you are early in the game, but it may affect your decision to continue into a more difficult area when you're playing later in the game. Save your soul items because there's often a time when you find a merchant somewhere out in the wilderness and you need that added boost of souls to buy something special. Though on that note, you don't have to buy the Ring of Avarice. The next world has the ring at the bottom of a tower beside a big red monster heart. If you are seeing this item burden notification, then go to your inventory and store anything that you're not planning to use anytime soon. It is early in the game so I can store these very powerful healing items for later. Then head over to your weapons because there's a very good chance that they are weighing you down quite a bit. You can see your item burden at the top right there. Here I am storing all the weapons that I'm never going to use. And you can see up there in the top right, my item burden is going down. Now I have space to pick up new stuff. These soul remains items may seem pretty useless, yet as I said at the beginning of the video, they can be used to lure some of the most dangerous enemies in the game. I use it here to lure the red skeleton all the way off of his perch and then down here where he fell to his doom. Or there's this skeleton here that tried to attack the soul remains and yeeted himself off of the cliff. If you took my advice earlier about having at least one slot for faith magic, then not only should you buy evacuate, but you should also buy antidote from the same guy. It comes in very handy when you are being frequently poisoned in the depraved chasm. I have defeated all three bosses in the first Arkstone, and I shot the dragon using the method shown previously in this video. The world is now pure white tendency, which has changed the world in various places. Here is one. The dragons have now disappeared, allowing you to collect this stuff. Also, if you didn't get it earlier, there is also stuff down here. As I was saying previously, don't consume your soul items right away. That way, when you really need souls to, you know, do another level, or when you find a merchant in the middle of a very tricky area, you can consume your soul items and, in this case, invest in a stone of ephemeral eyes, which is needed for turning the world to black tendency. And here I buy a bunch of rotten arrows, as the filthy woman is the only one who sells them. If you take your time and roll correctly, then you can roll through dragon fire, and you can do it without taking any damage. Speaking of rolls, when you get to the ballista at the prison, try to be as light as possible so that you have more invincibility frames when you do a roll. Get all the way to the end and you get an achievement. Walk, don't run, and then roll when you hear the first shooting noise. If you accidentally aggravate a friendly NPC in the Nexus, then you can go to the Nexus statue and pay to have them forgive you. You may also enter fractured mode and start work on getting those elusive ceramic coins required for the armor set, or you can change your body type and appearance using the Nexus statue. If you were playing as a male character, but you want to wear the female-only silver bracelets, then the Nexus statue is your solution. Demon's Souls rewards players for both good and bad messages. If somebody rates your message, then you get a full heal if you happen to be playing when the other person submits their rating. The reason why there are so many troll messages is that the writer is healed even if the message is rated as foul. When you find a very useful message that is highly rated, take two steps backwards or maybe forwards and then write the same message, perhaps differently worded, and you can poach the next few ratings for yourself. Well, you know, until somebody does the same thing to your message. The silver catalyst is not stronger than the wooden one. The silver wand catalyst gives you more MP, but it has less magical power than the wooden wand. The silver wand hits here for 136, the wooden one hits for 148. 
When you leave items with the crows, you need to select Drop. Do not select Discard or you will lose your item. You may then return later after warping back or, or maybe dying, or you can quit out of the game and then continue back in and the item will have been replaced with a present. On that note, here I am leaving a single Argite of Guidance, then another one, then a stack of two. In theory, this would give me 40 white arrows, but it only gave me 10. In short, you can only trade one item at a time. If you buy a Talisman of God from the Filthy Woman, all the way down there in World 2 of the Valley of Defilement, you can hand it over to the Crow's Nest for a colourless demon soul, which you will need in order to upgrade certain unique items. If you took my advice about getting the evacuation spell, then this probably doesn't matter. Nevertheless, if you haven't found somebody to sell you an Arkstone Shard yet, then the rats in the first Valley of Defilement will drop them. You don't need to be physically holding the upgrade materials on your character when you want to upgrade your stuff. I've just deposited my stones right there, over at the blacksmith, looking to upgrade my Crescent Falcon, and as you can see, I can still do it, even though I'm not holding any upgrade materials. The disc version of Demon's Souls is still selling for a pretty high price, even though the game has been out for years. This is because you can technically de-patch the game when you use the disc. You simply delete the game, reinstall it using the disc, and then you refuse to update it when you are asked. Doing this means that all of those old glitches that were patched are now still there and able to be used. 